The story begins with the ambulance driving at maximum speed along the road because they received a call. The ambulance was driving through a red traffic light and we thought about what happened there and hoped that no one was seriously injured. The ambulance quickly arrived at the scene of the accident and noticed that one person was badly injured and they quickly put him on a stretcher. The reporters said that they were reporting from the scene where a car and a garbage truck had recently collided. They said that the driver of the car was Zhou Jia, who worked as a doctor at the city hospital and the ambulance took him away from there. The doctors tried in every way to help Zhou Jia and the head doctor said that he urgently needed to be taken to the operating room. Zhou Jia lay with oxygen supplied and wondered what happened to his body and why it did not obey him and he could not move. After that, Zhou Jia was quickly brought into the operating room and the doctor said that they were now about to perform a complex operation on this guy. The doctors looked at the monitor and realized that Zhou Jia's heart rate was normal and they didn't need to worry about anything else for now. And then suddenly Zhou Jia realized that he seemed to have had an accident and his limbs were numb, but he listened to everything and understood their words. Zhou Jia realized that he could not even open his eyes, but he understood that he was alive because he heard and felt everything that was happening there. And then suddenly, after a long operation, the monitor showed that there was no longer a heart rhythm and Zhou Jia's heart stopped. The doctor said that Zhou Jia's vital signs were zero and they lost him because he was a good person and saved many lives. Zhou Jia thought that the doctors were idiots and didn't they see that he was still breathing and that his heart was beating and he was alive? Zhou Jia thought that they should not dare to give up on him ahead of time, because he was just driving home from work and did not know how this could happen. He recalled that three hours ago the doctors were carrying a patient and told Dr. Zhou that they had a patient who fell down the stairs and it seemed like he did it on purpose. The patient lay and suffered and said that he did not want to go back and repeated these words without stopping every second. Zhou Jia asked the patient not to worry and said that he was in good hands and asked his people to prepare the operating room. Diar, Zhou Jia noticed that the patient had fractures all over his body and damaged organs, and it was not like falling down the stairs. But then suddenly the patient grabbed Zhou Jia's hand with all his might and scratched it, and the nurse told the doctor that he had just been wounded. The patient continued to hold Zhou Jia's hand without letting go and suddenly stood up and told him that he did not want to come back and smiled at him. And then suddenly the patient had a death rattle and he immediately let go of Zhou Jia's hand and the doctor was very surprised by this action. Zhou Jia ordered his people to quickly prepare the operating room and transfer the patient there because he needed quick help. A couple of hours later, Dr. Zhou came out of the operating room and his people asked the doctor how everything went and Zhou was upset and said that they had lost him. Zhou Jia was very upset that they were unable to save the patient and he began to leave there and did not want to talk to anyone else. After that, Zhou Jia was driving his car and then a contact called him under the name of the director and diverted the doctor's attention. The doctor said that Zhou Jia listened to him and the director asked him where he was and said that the children in the orphanage were waiting for him to start the holiday. Zhou Jia apologized to director Wu and said that he was delayed because of the patient and said that he was already on his way and close. The director agreed with him and asked the doctor to be careful on the roads and Zhou Jia agreed with him and drove to the green light. Zhou Jia did everything correctly and according to the rules, but suddenly a garbage truck jumped out of nowhere next to him and began to approach him. Zhou Jia noticed that the garbage truck suddenly appeared there and was shocked by this because it was approaching his car without brakes. Zhou Jia was lying at his wake and many people came to say goodbye to such a kind and always helpful doctor. Zhou Jia thought that he was not dead and wanted the children to stop crying otherwise he would not bring them a cake for Children's Day. The director asked Zhou to rest in peace because he died in the line of duty and the hospital promised to pay compensation to the orphanage. Zhou Jia wondered if the director heard himself and where could he go because he couldn't even move and just lay there like a dead man. And then suddenly people asked everyone to say goodbye to Dr. Zhou and said that it was time to send him to the crematorium after that. Zhou Jia thought about which crematorium they were talking about because he was alive and people said that he would be born into a good family in the future. Zhou Jia did not understand what they were doing and wanted them to get him out of there and he still hoped that he was alive and just sleeping. Zhou Jia said non-stop that he was alive and then suddenly, after a few minutes, he finally managed to open his eyes. Zhou Jia was very cold and there were strangers walking around, he didn't understand where he ended up because the last thing he remembered was the accident. After the accident, 
he remembered the operating table and then he was cremated and he did not know what happened after this event. Zhou Jia wondered if he really ended up in another world like all the other people and he realized that it seemed like he no longer belonged to his world. And then suddenly Zhou Jia heard some singing and realized that it was so beautiful and sad and it sounded very unusual. And suddenly Zhou Jia noticed the girls there and realized that they were beauties and he could easily fall in love with them in an instant. Zhou Jia looked at them and he was sorry that they, too, seemed to have left the world like him and would no longer be able to return back. And then suddenly the girls began to dive into the water and Zhou Jia wondered why they did it, because everyone did it in turn. Suddenly, the girl in the water called Zhou Jia over and said that she had been waiting for a guy like him for a long time and was glad to see him. Zhou Jia was glad that she paid attention to him and began to dive into the water and came almost close to the beautiful girl. The girl looked intently at Zhou Jia and said that finally a man like him followed her and she was very happy about it. Zhou Jia was very happy and couldn't take his eyes off her and thought that her voice was beautiful and she was very cute. And then suddenly she came close to him and asked if he could keep her company because she was lonely and bored there. But unexpectedly, the girl immediately wrapped her hair around Zhou Jia's throat and began to choke him, and he thought that he couldn't stand it anymore. The girl did not want to let him go and strangled him more and more and said that she wanted him to keep her company forever and ever. Zhou Jia suffered and asked her not to kill him and let him go, but she did not want this and, on the contrary, continued to squeeze his throat harder. The girl told Zhou Jia that he would not be able to get out of there because anyone who entered the sea was blessed with a spirit and could not get out. The girl said that if she absorbs enough people like Zhou Jia, she herself will be able to return and they will help her a lot. Zhou Jia thought that it was all over, but suddenly when he touched her hair, something inexplicable began to happen. And then suddenly Zhou Jia managed to free himself from her grip and he was surprised and wondered if he really burned her hair with his touch. Zhou Jia immediately pushed the girl away and he even managed to injure her and he did not want this evil girl to approach him again. She was very surprised by this and said that this could not have happened and she did not understand why he was able to free himself from her tight grip. Zhou Jia began to swim out of the water and the girl shouted after him and did not understand why he could also get out of there and told him to stand. Zhou Jia dreamed of getting out of there quickly and she told him that he would not go anywhere and they would catch him again and punish him for his actions. She told Zhou Jia that he would not be able to get out of there and he would be caught because he now belonged to this place. And suddenly getting out of the water, Zhou Jia suddenly found himself in a different place and wondered if this was the city of Tong and he returned back. And then suddenly Zhou Jia was very surprised that he passed through a person and then he realized that they did not see or notice him. Zhou Jia was wandering the streets of the city and noticed a building in which there was light and read that it was a spacious bookstore of Sulu. Zhou Jia looked there and thought that it seemed warm there and realized that he wanted to go there and he began to enter through the door. Zhou Jia found himself inside the bookstore and realized that he was not mistaken and it was cozy and even had a pleasant atmosphere. But Zhou Jia walked and explored this store, but suddenly he was very surprised and froze in place as he noticed a very strange thing. And then Zhou Jia noticed that a man was lying on the floor and did not show signs of life and did not move, and he was scared by this. Zhou Jia looked at the man and wondered if he was dead or just lying there and something happened to him and no one knew about it. Zhou Jia began to wake him up and asked him to wake up and touched him to shake him if he could do it now. And suddenly when Zhou Jia touched this person, he had some feeling and was happy to feel the feelings again. Zhou Jia felt warm and wondered if he really merged with this person and wondered if this was really possible. But then suddenly someone started calling Su Lu and told him to wake up, Zhou Jia did not understand what was happening there and began to open his eyes. And then suddenly he saw a girl in front of him and she asked Su Lu if he thought he thought too much of himself. She asked Su Lu why the hell he was hanging around all night yesterday instead of being at home and whether he had any idea what her parents and sister thought of him. But Zhou Jia didn't understand which Su Lu she was talking about and looked in the mirror and wondered if this was his new body in this world. The girl was very angry at that time and asked Su Lu if he was completely deaf and hit the table next to him with all her might. She told him to listen and said that her family fully provided for him and therefore he should not do this anymore. The girl raised her hand and told Su Lu that he thought too much of himself and did not want to obey and did what he wanted. 
Su Lu looked at her intently and she lowered her hand and headed towards the exit and thought that he needed to be taught a lesson. She told Su Lu that if she doesn't see him at home tonight, he will definitely know what it's like to get a slap from her. After that, she left there and Zhou Jia looked in the mirror and thought what does it mean now his new name was Su Lu. After that, Su Lu sat on the computer and studied his new work, which he had to get used to in his new body. Su Lu looked at his phone and realized that he seemed to have a happy marriage as he saw messages from his wife. Zhou Jia looked at his hand and began to think about how he was able to return after death and move into the body of Su Lu. And then suddenly Zhou Jia remembered about that old patient and realized that it seemed that he was involved in all this. Zhou Jia realized that everything was just like that time and it must have been in the hour that it was all in the nails and from there it was necessary to look for the truth. He took off his glasses and thought that in any case he had returned to life and even though Zhou Jia's name was Su Lu now he didn't care. And then suddenly he heard a creak and the door opened and a strange man in a hood walked in and Su Lu greeted him. Su Lu looked at him intently and thought that this hooded stranger looked somehow familiar and it was strange. Su Lu immediately approached this man and asked the client if he could help him with anything or help him choose interesting books. But the strange man told Su Lu that he was just looking around and Su Lu asked to call him if his help was needed. Su Lu wanted to leave there but suddenly a strange man stopped and asked Su Lu if he didn't even recognize him. Su Lu was shocked and frozen in surprise and thought that it looks like he was not mistaken because this man initially seemed familiar to him. And then suddenly the strange man said that last night he knocked him out with a bat and told Su Lu that he was definitely dead then. Then Zhou Jie thought that it means he was able to enter this body because it was completely fresh, because he had recently passed away. Su Lu asked the man for forgiveness and said that today he had problems with his head and did not remember yesterday's events. The man asked Su Lu if he wasn't angry with him and said that he hurt him and he hit him with a bat yesterday. Su Lu said that the lost money was fortunate and thanked him for not touching the computer and phone. The man asked Su Lu to take the money back and another 800 on top and go to the hospital and said that he lost all the money yesterday and wanted to take more. He said that he thought about what he had done all night and couldn't sleep and thought that because of 300 he killed a man and even wanted to go to the police. Zhou Jia thought that because of this man he was able to get a new body and he escaped prison time for murder, only Su Lu died for nothing. Su Lu said that they had resolved this issue and the bully could calm down because he told him that everything was fine and not to worry. The man asked if he would call the police and Su Lu said he wouldn't and told him to go home and not do anything stupid. The man bowed to Su Lu and thanked him for not stopping him for such a vile act and giving him a chance to correct himself for his sins. The man wanted to leave the bookstore because he already felt relieved that he had confessed everything and therefore he was happy for it. But then suddenly Su Lu took out his phone and asked if he was at 911 and said that he wanted to tell them something. But then suddenly the man walked back into the store and was shocked, and the Tong City police asked Su Lu how they could help. The man got very angry at this and asked Su Lu if he had just called the police, but Su Lu only hid the phone. The man was angry at this and told Su Lu that he was a scoundrel because he himself promised not to call the police and immediately broke it. Suddenly a man ran up to Su Lu and began to squeeze his throat with all his might and wanted to see if he would survive this time too. Su Lu was in pain and asked to let him go, but the man did not want to do this and said that he should not have called the police. Su Li's phone was turned on and she asked him where he was and said that they would send a patrol after him and protect him. Su Lu could barely stand conscious and the bully told him that today he would definitely die and Su Lu really was almost suffocated. But then suddenly Su Lu hit the bully in the stomach with his unusual hand and hoped that this would help him survive today. The man froze in surprise because he felt severe pain that he had never felt before and he didn't know that people could do this. The man fell to the floor and passed out, and Su Lu finally managed to free himself from his tight grip because he was in danger. Su Lu looked at his hand and realized that it works in this world, and even this time it saved his life from this maniac. After this, the policeman told Su Lu that they looked at the surveillance footage from their store and made sure that this was not the first time. The policeman said that they would add robbery and attempted murder to his charges and said that he need not worry anymore. He told Su Lu that all he had to do was sign his statement and he would be free since this man was to blame for everything. Su Lu began to sign the application and thought that he would finally be able to leave there because he had been sitting there for several hours and was tired. 
The policeman told Su Lu that he was something because he himself neutralized the robber so even he still hasn't woken up. Su Lu said that everything was ready and asked if he could finally leave there and then a woman began to approach him. Su Lu looked at her and thought that she was a beauty and he would even like to marry such a beauty and not think about anything. But suddenly an officer approached him and told Su Lu that his wife had come for him and he could even leave there now because everything was fine. Su Lu was driving a car with his wife and he sat silently and looked at her, she asked Su Lu if he was okay. Su Lu said that everything was fine with him and thought what should he do because he didn't even know his wife's name and that's why he was silent. And then someone called his wife and told Dr. Lin that a school bus with children had just crashed on the southern highway. The interlocutor said that the injured children had already been taken to the hospital and said that they needed her help in this hospital. Lin listened to her friend and said that she understood everything and would soon be there to help them cope with such a problem. Su Lu now realized that her name was Lin and she was also a doctor and she seemed to be very good and had a kind heart. At this time, in Chongchuan District Hospital, doctors were carrying the girl to the operating room and said that she was already losing consciousness. Su Lu sat there and thought why did he just sit there doing nothing because he was supposed to be there and help save people's lives. Lin asked the doctor what the situation was and he said that they had already brought one seriously wounded person as well as five others. Su Lu looked at their conversation and was offended that now he could only observe from the sidelines and not help his people. And then a traffic controller came to the hospital and said that his girl was there because she was also taken there and asked to let him through. People asked him to calm down and said that it was impossible to go there now because there was an operation going on there and they were helping them. Su Lu was very nervous and immediately lit a cigarette to somehow calm down from all these problems that had befallen him. But suddenly some girl stood behind Su Lu and she was unhappy and told Mr. that smoking was not allowed in hospitals. Su Lu smiled and asked the girl if she was cold and said that it looked like she was dressed too lightly and asked her to get dressed. The girl said that she was fine, but she added that Su Lu still couldn't smoke there because it was harmful. Su Lu said that he would not do this again and asked her if she was injured because she was also on that school bus. The girl said that she was sitting at the very end so she was fine and did not need medical attention at the hospital. But suddenly she became upset and said that her friends were unlucky because she and they were seriously injured and the doctors were now operating on them. Su Lu was upset that innocent children were hurt and told the girl that he was glad that at least she was okay. The girl approached her wounded friend and asked him to hold on and said that when he gets better they will take a walk together on the street. Su Lu looked at her and thought that she was a very caring girl because she was so worried about her friends and worried. A few hours later, Lin came out of the operating room and the doctor touched her shoulder and asked her not to blame herself since they did everything they could. Lin asked the doctor not to touch her and said that her husband was there and she didn't want him to see her with some other man. And then Su Lu approached them and said that he was very pleased to meet her friend because they helped all people. The doctor got nervous and said that then he would go and check how things were going there and said that the rest of the children had already been quickly taken care of. The doctor said that he thought that they could handle the rest on their own and told Lin that she could go home and rest and immediately left there. Lin's mood immediately fell and Su Lu asked her not to blame herself and said that this was how life was arranged and nothing could be done. But Lin told him to shut up and he agreed with her and said that he just wanted her not to be sad because she wanted to save them. And at that very second, doctors suddenly came out into the corridor and said that this girl could not be saved and asked to take her to the morgue right away. Su Lu looked at her and froze in surprise and could not believe his eyes and immediately he felt very sad from this fact. Su Lu was very surprised and realized that it was the same girl and he knew that it was her and he thought how is this possible. Su Lu immediately stood up and approached her, but the doctors asked him to move away from the gurney and said that he was not allowed to touch the corpse. Su Lu did not want to leave there and believe that this girl was no longer there and he realized that it was she who had spoken to him recently. And then Lin also stood up and asked Su Lu what he was doing and said that she had already left this world and it could not be corrected. But suddenly Su Lu grabbed Lin's hand and said that she was not dead and he did not want to agree with this fact at all. Su Lu said that something else could have been done and they could have brought her back, but the nurse asked him to calm down. Su Lu started to leave from there and thought where she was and he knew that she couldn't go far and he wanted to meet her. Su Lu thought that her soul had recently asked him not to smoke there and it was unlikely that she had already gone to that world and was supposed to be there. 
Su Lu realized that he still had time because she was a very kind girl and he didn't want to lose her because he was already used to her. And then suddenly a girl appeared next to him and asked Su Lu if he was really looking for her and what he needed from her now. Su Lu was very surprised to see her and he was glad that she had not disappeared yet and he could talk to her and help her in any way. The girl sat in the corner and cried and told Su Lu that she was very cold and she couldn't get warm in any way and she didn't know what was wrong. The girl said that she asked the nurses to give her something to cover herself with, but they didn't seem to notice her at all in the hospital. And then Lin approached her husband and asked Su Lu what he was doing there and what happened to him and what he was thinking about at that time. Su Lu hugged the girl but Lin did not notice her and Su Lu was very sad that this girl was crying and he wanted to fix it. But then suddenly the girl disappeared from there and some glowing lights appeared there and Su Lu thought was it really her soul. Su Lu immediately ran from there and asked Lin to get out of his way and said that he was telling the truth and she could still be saved. The doctors wanted to stop Su Lu and asked him what he was doing and he quickly ran up to her and put his hand in front of her. Su Lu thought that since he was able to come back like that, she could do it too, and he should have helped her do it a little and she would have managed it. Su Lu shouted and said that she had to come back and he begged her to wake up and he did not remove his hands and wanted to help her. Lin said that she was already dead. But Su Lu said that the time for possible resuscitation had not yet expired and he knew it. Su Lu said that she could do this and she could handle even such a situation, but Lin pushed him away and told him to move away. Lin ordered all the doctors to take the girl back to the operating room and they should try to help her again. Lin told Su Lu that the girl had a wound on her chest and he was pressing too hard and could harm her from rash actions. The doctors rushed her to the operating room and Lin worked hard to help her and did everything in her power. Lin pressed on her chest and she believed in Su Li's words and wanted him to be right and they could revive this sweet girl. Su Lu was very upset and thought that it seemed to him that he was mistaken and they could not revive her and he was wrong about that. The doctors cried because they didn't believe that she could be saved and lost hope for a miracle and they felt sorry because she was young. But then suddenly the girl's hand twitched and the doctors were shocked and told Dr. Lin that the girl's hand was twitching and it was a miracle because she was alive. After that, Lin and Su Lu were driving and they were tired after a long and hard day and wanted to come home quickly. Lin told Su Lu that he never told her that he could resuscitate people because it was very interesting and amazing. Lin said that he acted like a real pro who had professional medical education and extensive experience. Su Lu thought and said that they were taught this when he received his license and he remembered all this and was finally able to use it in practice. But suddenly Lin said that Su Lu did not have rights and he became nervous and did not know what he could answer her to these words of hers. Lin thanked him anyway for helping her today and being very kind and very worried about this girl's life. Lin said that it was almost 8 and it was time for dinner and she said that they would go home and her parents were already waiting for them. Su Lu thought about her parents and thought that it looked like he would have to meet her parents and he was not ready for this. A few minutes later they arrived home and Lin opened the front door and asked Su Lu why he stood up and froze. They went into her house and Lin greeted her mom and dad and said that she was at home and missed them very much that day. Father Lin watched the news and said that their beloved daughter Lin Wanxiu had returned and he also really missed his daughter. Mama Lin also came out to them and was glad to see Lin Wanzu and said that she was just in time because dinner was almost ready. Su Lu heard the words of her parents and realized that his wife's name was Wanzu and he finally found out the name of the one he was married to. And then suddenly Wanzu's mother looked menacingly at Su Lu and he froze in surprise and did not understand what he could say to this woman. Mom once again called everyone to dinner and the father of the family was distracted from watching the news and told his wife that he was already on his way to the kitchen. And then sister Wanzu came down from the top floor and said that she would finally eat because she was very hungry because she had not eaten. Su Lu sat with her family and it seemed to him that this family didn't really like him and didn't even want to see him at home as a guest. Everyone was having dinner and then Wanzu's mother asked Su Lu if he really thought that they treated him badly and did not respect him. Su Lu said that it was not so and his mother asked him why he did not return home last night and what really happened. And then Lin Wanzu intervened in the conversation and told her mother that she had already told her that Su Lu was very busy in the bookstore yesterday. Lin Wanzu asked her parents to just have dinner and they looked at each other and did not understand their daughter's behavior. 
Mom agreed with her daughter and asked everyone to eat quietly and she asked Vansa to try the meat and said that it turned out very tasty. Mom told Su Lu that she left meat for him too and put it on his plate and asked him to rate her signature dish. Su Lu wanted to taste the meat and put it in his mouth and said that it was very tasty and he had never tried anything like it. But suddenly he almost vomited and he covered his mouth with his hand and thought that something was wrong and for some reason he wanted to vomit. Once Yu's mother was very angry and, hitting the table with her hand, asked Su Lu what was wrong this time and what he wanted to complain about. Su Lu asked her for forgiveness and said that he did not do it on purpose and Lin Wants Yu asked him if he was really unwell. Su Lu asked his wife not to worry and said that everything was fine and he wanted to try one more piece of tender meat. But suddenly he started coughing again and splattered the entire Vansu family with his drool and they sat and did not understand what was happening to him. And then Wants Yu's mother stood up and wanted to scream at Su Lu and tell him everything to his face that his behavior was bad. But Su Lu asked everyone for forgiveness and quickly ran to the restroom and his mother did not have time to say anything to him and looked at him in surprise. Lin asked Sister Yui to wipe the table and make noodles for Su Lu so that he would come to his senses and she agreed with her sister. Once Yu's mother told her that Su Lu was an insolent and ungrateful bastard and he didn't spend a single cent on the wedding and also spent their money on the store. Su Lu could not understand what was happening to him and why he began to feel sick as soon as he put food in his mouth and it was strange. Lin told her mother that Su Lu was simply unwell, but her mother said that even then she defended him and Lin said that it was she who married her to him. Lin went to check on Su Lu to see if he was okay and to help him if he needed help from her at that moment. Lin approached him and asked if everything was really that bad and she didn't understand why he still didn't come to his senses after dinner. Lin Wanzu said that she asked her sister to make noodles for him and she said that he could eat to make him feel a little better. Su Lu listened to her but continued to vomit and Lin asked him if it would be better for her to take him to the hospital so they could help him. Su Lu said that everything was fine with him and after that he sat in the room and thought that it was all over and now they would notice that something was wrong with him. But then suddenly Su Lu heard that it looked like Lin was taking a shower and he decided that he shouldn't even think about it and complicate things. Afterwards they went to bed and Su Lu slept on the bed and Lin Wanzu on the floor and he understood how the former Su Lu lived with her and slept. Su Lu thought that this made him feel better, but he wouldn't feel awkward about them sleeping in the same bed. But then suddenly Lin Wanzu turned on the light and told Su Lu that she would sleep on the bed and he would sleep on the floor and he did not understand what happened. Su Lu lay there and thought that it had not been an easy day but he didn't understand why he couldn't sleep because he was very tired. Su Lu was holding his hand and he was in a lot of pain, but he didn't understand why his hand suddenly hurt because he didn't do anything. Afterwards, Su Lu went to the restroom and suddenly looked at his hand and noticed that veins were swollen on it and he did not understand what it was. Su Lu realized that something was happening to him and thought maybe it was a curse or a punishment for something he had done. Su Lu thought that most likely it was because he returned to the world of the living or because he revived that girl today and saved her. Su Lu thought that everything was so and he used force and now had to pay for all these actions. Then suddenly Su Lu remembered this girl from the hospital and that she advised him to stop smoking in the hospital. Su Lu realized that in any case, he did a good deed and did not regret it, because if he had not helped her, he would not have been able to forget about it. And then at night sister Lin heard some sounds in the restroom and decided to see what was going on there and whether everything was okay. And then suddenly when sister Lin looked into the restroom, she saw that Su Lu was sitting there and he looked very intimidating and evil. Sister Lin was very scared by the sight of Su Lu and fell to the floor and screamed at the top of her lungs as she was very shocked by this. Su Lu was also surprised and wondered if she was so scared and fell to the floor because of him and what was wrong with him anyway. Lin Wanzu heard the screams and woke up and ran to her sister and asked what really happened and whether she was okay. Lin Wanzu saw that her sister was in shock and she said that there was something wrong with Su Lu and Lin was wondering what happened to him. And then Vansu's parents also woke up and, turning on the light, asked their daughters what happened there and why she was screaming at a late time. Wanzu's mother asked Su Lu if his eldest daughter was not enough for him and he decided to flirt with their youngest beloved daughter. Lin asked her mother to calm down and said that her sister Yui was just going to the toilet and got scared and nothing bad happened. 
Her parents heard her and asked if it was true because at first they thought about something completely different and they had bad thoughts. Su Lu at this time looked at his hand and realized that the pain had gone and he didn't know why his hand suddenly hurt and the pain also went away. Su Lu thought that he was very tired and didn't want to do anything anymore and just wanted to go to the bedroom and go to bed and forget about this day. Su Lu stood up and wanted to leave the room, but Yui started screaming and asked him not to come near her and quickly get out of their house. Su Lu wondered if he was some kind of ghost for Sister Lin that she wanted to drive him away and be wary and even afraid of him. Mom asked her daughter Yui to tell her about what happened there and what Su Lu really tried to do to her. Yui told her mom that there was nothing and she was just going to the toilet and when she opened the door she saw that Su Lu was sitting there in the dark and got scared. Mom understood what was going on and asked Su Lu why he was sitting there in the dark and did he really think that they were not able to pay for the light? But suddenly Su Lu pushed away Lin Wanzu's mother's hand and told her to get away from him and called her a damn hag and asked her to shut up. The father of the family got angry at Su Li's words and told him to watch his words and said that otherwise he would punish him and he would taste his power. Su Lu told them both to shut up unless they wanted him to file for divorce from their daughter and double up with their father shoulder to shoulder. Afterwards, Su Lu went to the bedroom and closed the door behind him and wanted everyone to leave him alone and not pester him with questions. The father of the family was very angry about this and said that Su Lu was an ungrateful bastard and he would still teach this insolent a lesson. Su Lu fell asleep soundly and he was glad about it because he really wanted to take a break from the hustle and bustle and gain strength for tomorrow. Lin once you said that her sister Yu was still very scared and she decided to sleep with her in her room today and calm her down. But in fact, Su Lu pretended that he was sleeping and the next morning he thought that he could not sleep, maybe because he was not the owner of the body. Su Lu was walking on the street and thought that he still needed to think about the situation with his wife, because much was still unclear to him. Su Lu thought whether he should file for divorce or should he just move out, but he knew that Su Lu didn't have a penny in his pocket. Su Lu wondered how long he could hold on like this and suddenly he stopped in front of the building and realized that it was a familiar hospital. Su Lu thought what a small town it was, that even wandering aimlessly around it, he still came across the place where he used to work. Su Lu decided that at least since he was there, he could go there and ask his familiar doctors to prescribe sleeping pills for him. Su Lu walked into the hospital and looked at the honor board of the department's employees of the month, and when he saw his photo, he remembered that this was a place of glory. Su Lu wandered along the corridors of the hospital and entered the room and remembered that this was his old department where he really liked. The Dr. Kong Jian was sitting in his old department and he asked Su Lu if he could help him with anything, but he silently left his office. Su Lu continued to walk around the hospital and he felt sorry because he missed the times when he worked there and everything was fine. Su Lu remembered how he helped sick patients in difficult times and always tried to do his best to help them recover. Su Lu remembered his first years of work in this hospital when he was taught how to properly place an four. Su Lu realized that the old days were the best and he really missed it and now he wandered aimlessly through the streets. Su Lu thought about how he could have gotten to this point because everything was fine with him and he didn't know that his last day was close. And suddenly Su Lu noticed that he had come to the morgue and thought why he came there and could not remember what he needed. But suddenly Su Lu remembered that he had come there for the old man's body because he could find some clue for himself there. Su Lu began to dial the numbers to enter the morgue and realized that they had not changed the password and that was good for him and he could enter. Su Lu entered the morgue and wondered where the duty officer had gone and was it already lunch time that he left his post so early? Su Lu stood in this room and thought how cool it was there and this was a familiar feeling for him during his previous work. Su Lu began to look around the room and thought in which refrigerator was that strange old man who had such an influence on him stored. Su Lu decided to study the old man's data and was surprised that his family had already taken his body and he should have come earlier. Su Lu understood that he was no longer a doctor and therefore he would hardly have been given the address of the family of that strange old man who was the culprit so easily. And then suddenly someone started typing the password and opening the door to the morgue and Su Lu realized that someone was going there and it was bad. And then doctors appeared in the room, carrying the corpse there on a gurney and talking among themselves about medical topics. Su Lu managed to hide from them and climbed into the refrigerator and closed the door there and there was deathly silence in the morgue and the doctors did not find out anything. 
Su Lo lay inside the refrigerator and thought that the doctors must have already left because he had already stopped hearing their voices outside. And then suddenly Su Lo felt strange because he felt very comfortable inside and it was pleasant for him to be there and not go anywhere. Su Lu said who would have thought that among a pile of corpses he would be better off than in the family with whom they lived in the same house. Su Lu thought how tired he was because he still hadn't slept even once since he came back to life and began to close his eyes. And suddenly, after a few minutes, Su Lu opened his eyes and wondered if he had fallen asleep there and during this time he was completely frozen. And then suddenly something began to happen to his hand and Su Lu wondered if the cold was flowing into him and it was very strange. Suddenly, after a couple of seconds, Su Lu could not understand what had happened and realized that he no longer felt any cold in this place. Su Lu opened the refrigerator door and looked around the room and realized that there seemed to be no one there and he could get out of there. Su Lu wanted to quickly leave there, but suddenly some kind of melody began to play and he was surprised and wondered what it could be. And then Su Lu realized that it was his phone ringing in his pocket and some contact saved in his phone as a fat man was calling him. Su Lu answered this man and thought who could have called him because he didn't know anything about old Su Li's acquaintances. And then suddenly the man whispered to Su Lu that the goods had arrived and everything was ready and he wanted to meet with him and discuss matters. Su Lu froze in surprise and did not understand what product they were talking about and what this man meant and what Su Lu was doing in general. After that, Su Lu ordered a taxi and arrived at the meeting place where two people were already waiting for him, sitting in the corner and smoking cigarettes. Su Lu got out of the taxi and walked up to one of them and the man called him boss and said that they were waiting for him and were glad to see him there. The man told his boss Su Lu that he would now take him to the place where the man who wanted to talk to him was waiting for him. They entered the building and Su Lu saw that a man was sitting there, drinking various strong drinks and waiting for him to appear. The man looked at Su Lu and said that he had finally appeared and he was glad to see him after difficult long minutes of waiting. Su Lu did not talk to him about anything and asked where the goods were and told the man to show the goods so that he could evaluate its quality. The man smiled and said that he immediately recognized good old Su Lu who, without further ado, always got straight to the point. The man patted Su Lu on the shoulder and then asked him to follow him and said that now he would show him the goods. Su Lu entered the room and froze in surprise and thought that Su Lu turned out to be a cunning asshole and he now found out about it. He thought that Su Lu was just a parasite living off his wife, but he managed to secretly organize an underground business. Su Lu said that this was quite a lot and he believed that sales would be carried out not only in Tong City but also in other places. The man said that Tong City was just the first step and soon they wanted to break into the entire Shanghai market and take it over. The man said that they had to hurry up and make money on the goods and he opened the blanket and asked Su Lu to evaluate the quality. And when the man completely opened the blanket, Su Lu froze in surprise and could not believe his eyes because he saw it. Suddenly, in front of Su Lu there were only pirated discs, which were their goods, and he thought that he was thinking about completely different things. Su Lu was surprised and asked the man if these pirated discs were really their goods and the man asked what he wanted to see there. Su Lu asked to change the topic and said that he wanted to go out and how much money he could get, the man was surprised by these words. Su Lu told him that he understood him correctly because this business went against his principles, so he no longer wanted to do it. The man was shocked and did not understand why his partner so abruptly decided to leave the business because everything was fine and the business was thriving. The man agreed with Su Lu and said that he had always been a man of principles and therefore he respected him very much as an honest man. The man asked to be allowed to calculate the numbers and said that the amount was approximately 20,000, taking into account all expenses. Su Lu told the man that then he would just take them because he urgently needed money for his personal emergency expenses. Afterwards, Su Lu immediately bought himself a refrigerator with this money and arranged for delivery and for that money his order was instantly delivered. Su Lu hardly dragged the refrigerator into the store and was glad that he managed to buy what he had been planning for a long time and that he had money. Su Lu was very tired and thought that now he would finally be able to get a good night's sleep because it seemed to him that he had not gotten enough sleep. And then suddenly Su Lu noticed Lin there and wondered what she was doing there and why she came there at such an early daytime. And then suddenly Lin Wanzu asked Su Lu what he was so busy with in the basement and she was interested in knowing about it right away. 
Su Lu didn't think much and told her that he had laid out books there and she believed him and did not ask other questions. Lin Wansu said that her shift was already over and Su Lu agreed with her and said that it was great that she was free. Su Lu thought about it and couldn't understand what she was getting at and what she really wanted to tell him, because he knew that she had come for a reason. Lin said that that little girl woke up and her father called their team to dinner at a restaurant and he could join them. Su Lu refused her offer and said that he was not hungry and did not want to go there and just sit there and do nothing. Lin Wansu agreed with him and asked if he would come home today because she was interested in knowing about Su Li's evening plans. Su Lu thought why she needed him there because they even slept separately and told her that he would not come and he had a lot of work. Lin Wanzu understood him and said that then she would go from there because she had a lot to do today and was in a hurry to some places. But suddenly, when Lin Wanzu was about to leave there, she heard a roar and suddenly turned around and noticed that Su Lu was lying on the floor. Lin Wanzu approached him and asked Su Lu if he was okay and what happened to him and if he needed her help. Su Lu began to come to his senses and said that everything was fine, only he wanted to eat and was very hungry because he had not eaten anything. Afterwards, they went to a restaurant together so that Su Lu could finally eat and gain strength because he had not eaten anything all this time. Lin Wanzu looked at Su Lu, who was sitting without a mood, and asked him if everything was fine and asked him not to hide anything. Lin Wansu asked maybe they would still go to the hospital where experienced doctors would provide him with professional help. Su Lu asked her to calm down because he was fine and thought that finally he could sleep properly and he solved this problem. Su Lu thought that he just had to solve the problem with food and the waiter came up to them and said that they could try their sour plum soup. The waiter said that if they had no appetite, this soup could help them and Su Lu had hope of good food for him. The waiter asked his dear assistant if she had finished preparing the noodles and if Mr. Su Li's order was ready yet. The cook said that she was almost finished and asked him to knead the dough while she said that she would take the noodles to them herself. While Su Lu was waiting for the noodles, he decided to try this sour plum soup because it looked quite appetizing and high in calories. And then suddenly Su Lu tasted this soup and froze in surprise because he experienced sensations that he had never experienced before. Su Lu started coughing non-stop and Lin Wansu asked him if everything was fine and what he didn't like this time. Su Lu said that this soup was very sour and could not be eaten, and he already regretted tasting it and appreciating it. And then the waitress came up to him and asked for forgiveness for the wait and said that their noodles were ready and everything was delicious. She told Su Lu that their plum soup should be drunk slowly, sip by sip, and then one could feel its real taste. Lin Wansu looked at the dish and told the waitress that the noodles seemed to have fallen apart a little and become soft. The waitress said that it was not like that and everything was as planned, but Su Lu reassured her and said that everything was fine. Su Lu started stirring the food and thought that even if it didn't help him, he would have to go to the hospital to find out what was wrong. Su Lu wanted his body to accept these noodles because otherwise in the hospital they would have given him IVs to cleanse his body. And then suddenly Su Lu raised the bowl to the end and began to quickly drink plum soup and dream about how he would like this dish. And after a few seconds, Su Lu emptied one bowl of soup and he really liked everything and was pleased with this delicious dish. After that, he began to eat the noodles and realized that it was also tasty and he began to quickly eat the entire portion so that the dish did not get cold. Su Lu quickly emptied the second bowl of food, but suddenly felt some pain in his body and felt uncomfortable. Lin Wansu and the waitress froze in surprise and looked at Su Lu and did not understand what happened to him and it looked like he quickly ate everything. The waitress asked Su Lu if he wanted more, but he thanked her for the delicious dish and refused the addition and was full. She was very glad that Su Lu liked everything and asked them to come to them more for delicious dishes and remove the bowls. She asked the dear one if he had finished preparing the dough in the kitchen and said that they still had a lot of orders for delivery. Su Lu looked at the waitress without taking his eyes off and thought about everything in the world, because he was glad that he was deliciously fed. And then suddenly Lin Wansu asked her husband if he really liked this type of girl like this waitress who he was staring at. Su Lu said that he did not like such girls and thought that he liked her, but she refused to share a bed with him. Lin Wansu listened to him and once again asked Su Lu if he would go home today, and he again refused her offer. Lin stood up and said that it was time for her to go and asked Su Lu to call her if he needed her or if he felt sick. Afterwards, Su Lu asked the waiter how much he charged, 
but the man smiled and said that they were neighbors and he didn't have to pay. Su Lo asked him if his wife would be against it then and the man said that they simply wouldn't tell her about it and it would become a secret. And then suddenly Su Lu told the man that his wife was very beautiful and he understood it at first glance by looking at her. The man froze in surprise and was shocked by these words about his wife and thought that Su Lu had somehow changed during this time. Su Lu said that his wife had good curves and was hot and could easily drive guys crazy with her beauty. Su Lu told the man that he was lucky to have such a beautiful wife as it was difficult to find girls comparable to her in the city. And then suddenly Su Lu told the man that maybe she was even too good for him because he was no different from the others. The man said that maybe it was so and he didn't even know what she saw in him and was grateful to her for putting up with someone like him. Su Lu then asked him to let him spend the weekend with his wife and borrow her to have fun with. The man said that he hoped it was a joke because he had already crossed all boundaries and ran into trouble himself. Su Lu asked him not to be angry and said that maybe she herself wouldn't mind and he wanted her to come out to them and express her desire. The man clenched his fists and asked Su Lu not to force him to do this and said that he himself would be to blame if he got hurt now. Su Lu smiled and said that he just asked him to call her there and there was nothing complicated or unusual about it. The man told Su Lu that he asked for it himself and now he will be responsible for his words to him and will not just leave there. But suddenly Su Lu quickly got up from his seat and headed to the kitchen, and when he opened the bedspread, he found out that he had been right all along. Suddenly Su Lu saw a girl there who looked like a suit that could be put on and taken off and his guess was correct. And then the man calmed down and asked Su Lu how he found out about this and wanted to hear the truth because he was very interested. Su Lu said that first he should communicate with his original form and he was wondering who had to be so bored to put on such a show. The man smiled and suddenly began to open his body and come out of it as if he was wearing some kind of suit. And then suddenly a new guy with long hair appeared in front of Su Lu and held the man's face in his hand like some kind of mask. The mysterious guy asked Su Lu what impression he made on him and whether he was surprised by his bright appearance. The stranger sat down on a chair and said that he was interested to know how Su Lu figured it out because it was impossible to do. Su Lu said that the stranger was not one of them and said that he was just very observant and noticed a couple of strange things. Su Lu said that although their hands were different sizes, their nails were the same and he noticed this nuance and guessed what was wrong. Su Lu told the stranger everything he wanted to know and said that now it was his turn and asked what the hell was going on there. And then suddenly the stranger grabbed Su Li's hand and put it to his chest and said that the human shell was a technique created by his ancestors. The stranger said that for many generations and no one could practice it until he himself adopted this technique from his ancestors. Su Lu was shocked because he realized that the stranger had no bones and it was a systemic disease called osteomalacia. The stranger was surprised that Su Lu was able to immediately identify such a rare genetic disease that not everyone knew about. The stranger said that most of his ancestors could not practice this technique because they were not sick, unlike him. Su Lu asked the stranger what his name was and he was interested to know the name of such a person with such rare abilities. The stranger said that his name was Su Qinglan and he could call him by his name whenever he wanted because he was glad of his company. Su Lu wanted to ask Su Qinglang who the people he pretended to be were and found out that they were his natural parents. Su Lu said that he had just called his mother and asked Su Qinglang for forgiveness for what he said earlier. Su Qinglang asked him not to worry and said that he was not angry but he was wondering what he meant by not one of them. Su Qinglang asked Su Lu if he had seen them and Su Lu asked him to forget about it and said that he himself was one of them. But suddenly Su Qinglang began to laugh non-stop and Su Lu was surprised and thought that he told him something funny, because it's true. Su Lu asked to return to the topic of costumes and asked is it true that it is made of human skin or just looks like. But Su Qinglang just smiled and said that it was just fish skin and paint, but it turned out very realistic. Su Lu asked why he needed a noodle shop because he heard that people were willing to pay a lot of money for such things. Su Qinglang said that he did not need it and did not want to use the heritage of his ancestors for profit and other purposes. Su Qinglang said that in addition, for the demolition of the old family estate, he was given compensation in the amount of more than 20 houses. Su Lu thought that it was dishonest because in a past life he worked for days in a hospital to somehow earn a living. Su Lu touched Su Qinglang on the shoulder and said that he was glad to meet him but it was time for him to go because he had things to do. 
Su Lo realized that Su Qinglang was soft like a piece of cotton wool and his skin was soft and he could make a good soft pillow. And then suddenly Su Lu ran out of this cafe screaming and Su Qinglang looked at him in surprise and did not understand why he did this. And then suddenly Su Qinglang looked at the suit and asked his mother what she thought, it looks like Su Lu really bought his story. Su Lu thought that the refrigerator compartment was ready, but it remains to decide something with this store because it wouldn't last long like this. Su Lu thought about it and decided that first he needed a sign with the name and needed something more attractive and beautiful. Su Lu went to a place to improve everything in his bookstore because he thought that many things there had long been outdated. Su Lu came to one place and the employee looked at him and asked the client how he could help him and what he was looking for there. Su Lu told the employee that he wanted to design a sign for his store so that it would be fashionable and attract people from the street. But the employee apologized to Su Lu and said that they were no longer doing this and were now selling candles and incense. Su Lu said that it was a shame because he remembered that they used to make excellent signs there and he knew about it when he worked at the hospital. But the employee said that they had a couple of ready-made signs left and if he liked something, he could sell him all the signs inexpensively. Su Lu decided to look at these signs and saw that there were words like your whole life is predetermined and it was interesting. The seller told Su Lu that he could give 200 for each and could take them now because they didn't need these signs. At the same time, Su Qinglang stood on the street and looked at Su Lu, and after thinking about many things, he lit a cigarette and behaved reservedly. Su Qinglang saw that Su Lu had bought signs but his hands were busy and he could not open the taxi door and struggled with it all the time. And then suddenly Su Qinglang approached Su Lu and asked if he needed help and Su Lu said that he would not refuse this. Su Qinglang helped him take the signs to the store and after hanging them there, he told Su Lu that everything seemed to have turned out great and stylish. Su Qinglang looked at the signs and said that if his memory served him right, then these were lines from the fairy tales of the writer Ji Xiaolan. Su Qinglang said that they mean listen to his story but don't take it seriously because he also heard it from someone else. But suddenly Su Qinglang told Su Lu that it seemed to him that these signs would not help his store in any way and Su Lu wondered why. Su Qinglang said that their world was full of mysterious things, but few of them were able to capture people's attention. Su Qinglang said that sometimes they were just boring to talk about and sometimes they were forbidden to talk about and people always demanded more. Su Qinglang said that no one would listen to him if he did not change something in history and, for example, there were no mountain spirits and demons in their world. Su Qinglang said how could they exist there because all the stories were created to warn people against these monsters. Having finished his story, Su Qinglang began to leave from there and Su Lu noticed that his mood suddenly dropped at that moment. Su Lu finally exhaled and said that he was glad that he had finished with these matters and now he could calmly rest on the sidelines. Su Lu was very tired after a hard day and decided that he needed to go and take a nap because his energy and strength were already running out. Su Lu went up to the room where the refrigerator was located and, opening it, realized that now this was what he needed. Su Lu climbed into the refrigerator and thought that now he could get some sleep and gain strength to continue to create miracles in the world. Su Lu, feeling uplifted, came to the noodle shop and noticed that a lot of couriers came there and they had a lot of orders. Zhou Jie thought that Su Lu was still a fool and why did he give up these books because he needed to open his noodle shop. Su Lu smoked a cigarette and upon reflection realized that he remembered that he was cremated on Children's Day and now it was almost the spring festival. Su Lu realized that six months had already passed and he didn't even have time to blink an eye and he realized that they all lived in order to end up in a cemetery. And then Su Qinglang approached him and asked if he really wasn't going to go home for the holidays, because this is a great occasion. Su Lu said that he noticed that Su Qinglang was also in no particular hurry to leave there and didn't he really want to go home either? Su Qinglang told him that he had already told him that he had more than 20 houses and which one he should go to. Afterwards, Su Lu returned to the bookstore and thought maybe he should visit that orphanage and bring some joy to the poor kids. And then suddenly a man came into the store and asked Su Lu if they were open and if he could read there for a couple of hours. Su Lu told the man that of course he could go there and said that they did not have certain prices and he could pay whatever he wanted. The man thanked Su Lu for such hospitality and sat down in the corner of the bookstore and began looking for an interesting book to read. But then suddenly, when there was complete silence in the store, 
the door opened and many people appeared dressed like that man. The man greeted his colleagues and said that they had finally arrived because he was already starting to worry about his people. The man greeted Su Lu and said that they also wanted to sit in the bookstore and quietly read a book. Su Lu was surprised because he did not expect that there would be so many people today and he wondered if it was the sign that attracted these people. A couple of hours passed and people sat silently and read books and did not distract each other from reading and were busy with their own business. And then suddenly, after a couple of minutes, Su Qinglan came into the store and told Su Lu that it was crowded today and it was great. Su Qinglang brought noodles to Su Lu and asked the people who were reading if they wanted to have a snack because there was an excellent cafe nearby. People would be happy to eat now, but they said that now they had all forgotten their wallets and therefore had to give it up. Su Qinglang asked them not to worry and said that it was the holidays and they were still working and needed to take care of them. The men were delighted and wished Su Qinglang happiness next year and said that his words were joy to them like honey. Su Lu was eating noodles and thought that today Su Qinglang forgot to bring him sour plum soup and without it he couldn't eat anything. Su Lu, after dinner, approached the readers and gave them a cigarette and asked them to feel at home and read all the books for health. They all went outside to smoke and Su Lu was curious and asked them if they really weren't going home for the holidays. The man said that they did not have time for holidays because they worked to send more money to their families. But they did not lose heart and smiled and told Su Lu that they needed to read books a little and smoke from time to time. The man asked Mr. Su Lu if he was going to close soon and he said that he was working all night today. They asked Su Lu if he, too, would not go home and he said that he had quarreled with his wife and he had no desire to return. The men said that they respected his choice and then suddenly a car stopped in front of them and then someone called Su Lu to their place. Su Lu walked up to the car and saw that Yui was sitting in the back seat and she asked Su Lu to get into the car so that they could go home. Su Lu said that he had visitors and wondered if she really thought that he would once again poke his nose into this nest of poisonous snakes. Su Lu thought that he didn't even sleep on the same bed with his wife and it was strange and he didn't even want to think about that damned house. But Su Lu wondered why he was thinking about this again because she was not even his wife and he barely knew this lady in this world. Yui got angry and asked what was wrong with that idiot Su Lu and what was he talking about all the time and it was some kind of nonsense. Lin Wants Yu asked her sister to calm down and said that it was time for them to return because their parents were probably already waiting for them at home. Yui told her sister that she would still return there again at night and Su Lu would never disturb her again at a late time as usual. Lin Wants Yu said that of course she would do it because she was his wife after all and should always take care of her husband. Afterwards, the sisters left there by car and Su Lu looked at them and asked those men if his wife was an incredible beauty. The men agreed with him and said that he was very lucky to have her and he had to look for such beauties because there were few of them in the city. And then Su Qinglan approached them and said that he had brought them rice with stewed pork and asked them to go and eat before it got cold. People thanked Su Qinglang and said that he was too kind and Su said that they had already discussed this and needed to help each other. Afterwards, all the people sat in the bookstore and had dinner, they thought it was incredibly delicious food that they had not eaten. And then one of them said that it was time for them to call it a day and asked everyone to clean up after themselves and then leave and go back to work. Su Lu walked the people to the exit and they told Mr. that they had gone to work and thanked him for all his kindness today. Su Lu said that there was no need to thank him because he himself was glad of such company and they had a heart-to-heart -heart talk and then they left from there. Su Lu went to Su Qinglang's cafe and asked him if he should take care of the chopsticks since he quickly ran out of them. Su Qinglang said that he was going to get some chopsticks and continued to read the news about the big fire and about real strong heroes. The newspaper contained the latest and most interesting news that happened in their city and something caught his attention. The newspaper said that last Thursday there was a fire in an apartment building in the city of Thun and it was difficult to put it out. But five construction workers nearby were not afraid of the fire and saved more than 20 people, but they themselves could not get out of there. Su Qinglang looked at the bowls of food that were untouched and wished the heroes a successful journey and he felt very sad about this. At this time, a holiday began in the city of Tong and people began to set off fireworks and Su Lu could not take his eyes off this spectacle. Su Lu looked at this and thought that the spring festival had begun and all the residents were cheerfully celebrating it and were happy. 
And then it started to rain and Su Lu looked at the street and thought about all the events that happened to him and remembered his past self. But suddenly Lin Wanzu called him and asked Su Lu if she had disturbed him and if he was sleeping at work at that time. Su Lu told Wanz that he was awake and wondered if she really thought that he would answer her call if he were sleeping at work right now. And then suddenly, after a couple of seconds, Lin Wanzu appeared in the store and Su Lu froze in surprise because he didn't expect to see her there. Su Lu quickly made her tea and asked his wife why she was there and whether her parents were against it and whether they were crazy. Lin Wanzu just nodded her head and Su Lu didn't know what to do because he needed to somehow start a conversation with her on any topic. Su Lu didn't know what to do because in his past life he didn't even have a girlfriend, let alone a wife, and he didn't know how to communicate with her. And then he got an idea and asked his wife maybe they could take a walk because there was fresh air and pleasant weather outside. Wang Xiu was surprised and said that it was raining, but Su Lu said that it was just a little rain and that's okay. It was pouring rain outside and Lin Wang Xiu was surprised and asked Su Lu if he could still go under an umbrella and hide from the rain. Su Lu refused the offer and said that he would run to the stop and hide there from the rain because he was not cold. They got to the stop and Zhou Jie thought that it was all because of the idiot Su Lu and only he was to blame for all this. Su Lu lit a cigarette and asked Lin Wanzu if she came by car and how she got to the store and whether it was difficult for her. Lin Wanzu told her husband that she took a taxi and asked Su Lu if he was sure he was okay and why he suddenly asked such questions. Su Lu said that everything was fine and asked his wife to then let him take her back so that he would not worry about her. Afterwards, Su Lu caught a taxi and accompanied Lin Wanzu home and said that now he was not worried and was completely calm about her. But suddenly Su Lu stopped near the house and said that he would not go further and she was surprised and asked why he did not go inside. Su Lu told Wanz that they needed to meet together someday and seriously discuss all their problems and find a compromise. But then suddenly Lin Wanzu stopped near the house and asked Su Lu for forgiveness, but he did not understand why she did this. Su Lu was surprised and did not understand why she apologized to him because she was not to blame for anything and it was all about him. But then suddenly Su Lu hugged Lin Wanzu from behind and thought that he did not control his body and maybe it was Su Lu himself. Lin was very surprised and Su Lu told her that he always wondered if there was someone else in her heart and he wanted to know about it. Lin Wanzu was silent for a few seconds and suddenly told Su Lu that he was right and she had someone other than him and that was news. Su Lu told Wang that he understood her and immediately let go of her hand and walked away from her a few meters and froze in place in surprise. Lin Wanzu asked him for forgiveness for all the pain she caused him and for all the other sins she had committed in the past. Su Lu said that she did not need to apologize because she was his wife and he respected her very much and did not want to hear so many apologies. Lin Wanzu told Su Lu that later she would give him more money for his store so that he could promote it further in the future. Wanzu again asked him for forgiveness and Su Lu asked him to stop apologizing and said that they would talk about money later. And Su Lu asked his wife to first tell him about this guy and Lin said that he was an amazing and incredible person. Su Lu asked her, it turns out he had no chance and Zhou Jie thought that Su Lu really wanted to hear this from his wife. Zhou Jie could not think that Su Li's wishes could affect him and suddenly Wanzu said that he had no chance. Su Li's mood fell and he told Wanz that he understood her and then he would no longer bother her and would leave her alone in the future. Lin Wanzu thanked Su Lu for everything and said that she would go home because her parents were already waiting for her and were worried about her. And then suddenly Su Li's phone rang and the driver of the taxi they were riding in called him and said that he had news for them. The taxi driver told Su Lu that his companion left her purse in his car and now he will return to give him this bag. Su Lu said a huge thank you to the taxi driver and the taxi driver said that it was not difficult for him and asked him to check if everything was in place. Su Lu said that now he will open the bag and check everything as he did and asks to make sure that nothing was missing and everything was in place. And opening the bag, Su Lu suddenly noticed Lin Wanzu's wallet and realized that valuable information for him could be stored there. And suddenly opening his wallet, Su Lu froze in surprise and was in shock because he saw a photograph where he stood as Zhou Jie. The taxi driver asked if everything was okay and said that he didn't touch anything and Su Lu said that everything was in place and asked him to drive more carefully. Su Lu looked at the photo of Lin together with Zhou Jie and realized that it only now dawned on him what the matter was and now everything became clear. 
He remembered that five years ago a doctor came to him and asked Zhou Jia if he was free because he had one urgent matter for him. The doctor asked Zhou Jia if he could take the interns on a round and show them everything in the hospital and Zhou Jia said that now everything will be. Zhou Jia asked his colleague to wait a second and suddenly he noticed a young intern girl and froze in surprise. It was Lin Wanzhu and she was very embarrassed that a doctor like Zhou Jia paid attention to her and she was ashamed. Zhou Jia smiled and thought that she had grown up to be a beauty and then she was just a new inexperienced intern and she was beautiful. Su Lu smiled and he couldn't believe it because it turned out that he had cuckled at himself and it was very funny on the other hand. Zhou Jia slapped his chest and told Su Lu that from this day on they became brothers and he didn't have to worry about anything else. Zhou Jia looked up and told Su Lu that he would take care of Lin Wanzhu and do everything to make her happy in this world. Zhou Jia watched the fireworks and told Su Lu that he would protect and help his wife instead of him and he could be sure. Afterwards, Su Lu called Lin Wanz and told her that she forgot her bag in the taxi and said that he would immediately bring her the bag. Su Lu quickly gave her the bag and Lin Wanzu thanked him for his kindness and he simply said goodbye to her and went back on business. Su Lu wanted to call a taxi, but there was not a single free driver around, because it was already late and everyone had been asleep for a long time. Su Lu realized that he should not have let that taxi driver go because now how could he find the driver on the night of the spring festival? And then Su Lu decided that he shouldn't just stand there and wait for a taxi and decided to walk so as not to simply waste time. But then, when Su Lu was wandering the streets at night, a car suddenly stopped in front of him and the driver asked him if he could give him a lift. Su Lu got nervous and the driver asked him not to worry and said that he would not take a lot of money for the trip and would do everything quickly. Su Lu got into the car and thought that it was completely new and he could still smell the leather seats and besides, it was clean. Su Lu thought about it, it was rare to see people driving a new car, and besides, it was a good model. The driver gave Su Lu a cigarette and he asked the driver if it wasn't a secret why would he drive so far from the center late at night. Su Lu lit a cigarette and wanted to hear answers to his questions and Su Lu told the driver that he had a store there and he was going there. They were driving through the city at night and Su Lu told the driver that his accent was not local and asked him if he was from somewhere else. The driver told Su Lu that he was right and he came there from the city of Rome to work and for some reason something about him alarmed Su Lu. Su Lu asked if he was going home for the holidays and thought that the driver had a tasteless cigarette that tasted just like water. The driver said that his wife was sitting at home with the children and he thought that they were better off without him and he would rather earn more for them. Su Lu told him that he was great and asked that he had just bought a car and the driver said that his son gave him this car. Su Lu was surprised and told the driver that his son must have been a very successful man considering how old his father was. The driver smiled and said that his son is a very good boy and always helps him in everything and provides him with everything he needs. Su Lu thought that this was strange because why did he work so much even on holidays if his son could buy him a car. The driver told Su Lu that now it has become more and more difficult to earn money and it was difficult for a person to even provide for himself. Su Lu interrupted the driver and said that he would not agree with him because he could always find a way to make money. The driver said that he had three children at home and their education was not cheap and he usually worked during the day and always sent them money. Su Lu listened to the driver and thought that after all, these were damn strange cigarettes and he had never smoked such cigarettes before. The driver said that he had to work in the evenings and every day before going to bed he talked to them on Skype and it was great. The driver said that this suited him and he was glad to see their faces every day, even on the screen, and this helped him not to miss them. The driver told Su Lu that sometimes he was so tired of it all that he couldn't even buy better cigarettes because he didn't have money. Su Lu realized that this driver was very fond and then suddenly the ash from the cigarette fell down and Su Lu froze in surprise and was shocked. Su Lu saw that the cigarette had made a hole in the car and he was very surprised by this and thought how this was possible. Su Lu looked at this and wondered if he had just burned a hole in the car with a cigarette and it seemed to him that it was impossible. Su Lu realized that it was not the quality of the car and it seemed to him that the car was made of paper and it was very strange and inexplicable. Suddenly, Su Lu realized and remembered the driver's words that his son gave him a car and he froze in surprise at this fact. Su Lu realized that the driver's son burned the paper machine when his father and then everything became clear to him, but he thought that it was mysticism. 
Su Lu realized that this explained his tasteless cigarettes and he even felt sorry for this driver and seemed to know nothing. Su Lu thought that to be honest, she didn't even notice that the driver was not entirely alive and initially he seemed strange to him. Su Lu didn't know what to do because he, too, was completely alive, he didn't know what he could tell the driver and how to question him. He thought that he didn't need any extra problems at all and he just wanted to get home and go to bed without a headache. After all, in any case, he was able to wound even that faceless girl in the lake and some ghost would hardly be able to do anything to him. But suddenly everything began to burn under Su Li's foot and he did not understand what was happening there and why the car suddenly caught fire. And then suddenly a bright glow appeared in front of Su Lu and the driver and the car began to disappear and Su Lu could not find an explanation for this. And then suddenly they found themselves in a different place and Su Lu noticed that a school bus was driving in front of them, which was very familiar to him. And suddenly a girl waved to him from the bus and Su Lu was surprised because it was the same girl he had saved recently. Su Lu looked at the driver and it didn't look like he was drunk and he didn't understand why the terrible accident could have happened. And then suddenly the girl smiled at the driver from the bus, but at one moment her face became scary and she stuck out her long tongue. The driver was very scared by this and thought what the hell it was, and then in a hurry he began to look for the brake pedal. The driver lost control and crashed into a neighboring car and the car immediately burned out, Su Lu was scared to watch this. And then suddenly everything disappeared and turned into burnt ashes and next to Su Lu there was no longer a car with a driver or a bus. Su Lu immediately remembered that girl from the bus who forbade him to smoke in the hospital and whose life he saved. Su Lu thought about this and thought about who he saved after all and what he did, not understanding what matters he was interfering with with his help. The next morning, Su Lu wrote to Lin Wans and asked if she wanted to go to the cinema in the afternoon, but she said that she was working. Su Lu wondered if she was working and he would like her to know that he was not Su Lu but the good Dr. Zhou Jia. But Su Lu thought that most likely this would scare her very much and decided that for now he would not tell her about it, because the fewer people know, the better. And then suddenly Lin Wanzu wrote to him that they could go to the cinema in the evening and Su Lu was happy about it because it was very cool. And then suddenly a car drove up to the store and Su Lu couldn't understand who it could be because he wasn't expecting anyone to visit today. And then suddenly a woman got out of the car along with this child from the hospital and Su Lu froze in surprise when he saw this girl. Su Lu thought that it was like the devil himself had come to him and he was not at all happy to see him in the guise of that cute girl from the bus. Su Lu remembered that last time they wanted to treat him to dinner, and if you think about it, they still didn't want to get rid of him. Su Lu realized that yesterday's taxi driver died because of this girl and she had some kind of secret and she was clearly hiding something from all the people. The woman walked up to Su Lu and greeted him, she said that she was the mother of this girl named Ruijui that he knew. The woman bowed to him and said thank you to Su Lu for saving her girl because she couldn't live without her little miracle. The woman gave Su Lu a gift and he said that there was no need to worry so much because he just did what he thought was necessary for her. Ruerue smiled at Su Lu and said good morning to Mr., and wished his day to start better than other people. Ruizui asked her mother if she could stay there and read books because she had long wanted to read some books and she was interested. The woman told Mr., Su Lu that if it wouldn't be too difficult to look after Ruizui, she wanted to stay with him. She said that Dr. Lin told them where his store was and said that they were perfect for each other and it was true. Su Lu said that she was flattering him and now it became clear to him how they were able to find him so quickly because he didn't want this at all. Afterwards, Ruizhui sat in the store and quietly read a book, and Su Lu was anxious in his soul and he could not take his eyes off her. And a couple of minutes later, Su Qinglan entered the store and was surprised to see a girl sitting there and reading without adult supervision. Su Qinglang came up to her and said that what a sweet girl visited this store today and stroked her head gently. Ruerue told Su Qinglang that he was cute too and they smiled at each other and Su said that she was a very nice girl. Afterwards, Su Qinglang approached Su Lu and said that they should go outside for a few words and discuss something now. Su Qinglan said that he received a call from the management company and wanted to know if they would terminate their rental agreement. Su Qinglang said that the management company said that they could return their deposit to them and he wanted to know Su Li's opinion about it. Su Lu said that he thinks that he will refuse because even if they return the deposit, it still would not be enough to open another store. 
Su Qinglang said that he would not do this either and would now call them and tell them the answer for both of them and immediately left there. And then suddenly, when Su Lu returned to the store, he was very surprised because he did not notice Ruiz Hui sitting there and did not know where she went. And then suddenly Su Lu noticed that she was going down the stairs and wondered if she really went to the second floor. Su Lu looked at her menacingly and asked if she was upstairs and what she was doing there because he was interested in it. Ruijui said that she was on the second floor but it was very dark there and she could not see or notice anything there. Ruiz Hui stood in front of him and Su Lu looked at her and remembered her demonic and scary image on the bus. Ruijui said that if there were no more questions for her, then she would go and continue reading her interesting books. Su Lu looked at her and thought that it was necessary to finish her off because all this time she was pretending to be a person and was a monster. Su Lu thought not to let himself be deceived because children of her age did not behave like that and she was not a person and he no longer believed her. Su Qinglang at that time stood in front of his mom and dad and set the table there and told them that he had a day off today and was free. Su Qinglang sat in front of them and told his mother that he brought her favorite rice wine there and drank it for happiness and prosperity. Su Qinglang told his father that he brought his favorite Mao Tai and drank it for him to quench the thirst of his father who loved to drink. Su Qinglang told his parents that he would definitely find out from Su Lu how he was able to return to earth because it was very interesting. Su Qinglang asked his mother and father not to worry and said that he would do everything to bring them back to this world because he missed them. Su Qinglang dropped his chopsticks and said that this time he will not do as they tell him and will not listen to them anymore. Su Qinglang said that even if they didn't want it, he would try by any means to get this important information out of Su Lu. Su Lu at this time thought that he was no longer a doctor or even a man, and there was a high chance that she would catch him to bring him back. Su Lu thought that Rue Rue came to him just like that time in the hospital and he thought that now his life was in danger. Su Lu thought that she had been eyeing him for some time and he did not believe that she came to him to thank him for saving him. Su Lu swung his hand and his hand again became black and scary and he thought that he had gone through a lot to return there. Su Lu looked at her menacingly and thought that no one would force him to go back to the hell he went through. Su Lu wanted to grab her and she suddenly saw his hands and asked Mr. Su Lu if something happened to him. Su Lu said that she was probably very tired and said that he wanted to give her a massage to relieve neck pain and she would calm down. Afterwards, Su Lu quickly ran to the toilet and washed his face with water and thought that she was sitting there as if nothing had happened and this infuriated him. Su Lu wondered if Ruiz Hui really thought that he could not harm her since she had a pretty face and was young. Su Lu just wanted her to stick out her nasty tongue and then they would fight like real warriors and solve all the issues. Ruiz Hui was sitting and reading a book, but suddenly she heard some voices from the toilet and got up and went to see what was going on there. Su Qinglang at this time asked the family not to even try to convince him and he wanted their family to be reunited again. Su Qinglang told the family that if Su Lu could return, then they could too, and then they would live as before and everything would be fine. But then suddenly Su Qinglang felt a strange wind and cold behind him and wondered what could cause such a draft. And when Su Qinglang went back into the hall, he suddenly saw that Ruiz Hui was standing there and silently smiled at him with an evil smile. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui stuck out her long tongue and ordered to obey the order of hell and it was time for the dead to hit the road. And then suddenly, Su Qinglang's mom and dad began to emerge from their souls and fly towards this devil in the guise of the girl Ruiz Hui. Su Qinglang looked at this and asked Ruiz Hui to stop because he did not want to lose his parents forever and be left without them. Ruiz Hui began to absorb them with her tongue and Su Qinglang begged her to stop and said that he was ready for anything. Su Qinglang wanted to run towards her and stop her plans, but suddenly he tripped and fell to the floor and could not stop Ruiz Hui. Su Qinglang asked her not to take them and said that he would not harm anyone and he just wanted to reunite with his family. Su Qinglang lay on the floor and tears flowed from his eyes and he begged this creature to stop taking them and leave his family alone. But Ruiz Hui finished her business and stuck her long tongue back and silently looked at Su Qinglang and laughed evilly. And then suddenly Su Qinglang screamed and told Ruiz Hui that Su Lu was also not a person and why didn't she take him and it's not fair. Su Qinglang claimed that he knew for sure that Su Lu was not a person and why she did not take him but took his family. Su Lu was looking in the mirror at that time and thought that he wanted to stay in this body and stay and live a completely different life. 
Su Lu thought that she was only there to observe him and he should not take action until he knew the truth. And then Su Lu came back and saw that Ruiz Hui was sitting there as if nothing had happened, reading a children's book and not bothering anyone. A couple of hours later, Ruizhui's mother returned to the store and thanked Su Lu for looking after her all day. Su Lu asked her not to worry and said that he was happy to look after Ruiz Hui and they had fun together in the store. Su Lu looked at the woman and thought that her hairstyle had not changed at all, although when leaving she said that she was going to the hairdresser. Su Lu said goodbye to the woman and she and Ruiz Hui left there and Su Lu thought that there was something wrong with them after all. Afterwards, Su Lu decided to go to Su Qinglang's noodle shop and take a look at how things were going for him and how that day went. But suddenly Su Lu froze in surprise and was shocked because he saw that Su Qinglang was sitting on the floor and drinking strong drinks. Su Qinglang cried and repeated that it was dishonest and unfair and he could not do anything about it and it was a demon. Su Lu approached Su Qinglang and asked him what happened because he had never seen him in such a terrible state. Su Qinglang looked at Su Lu and said that today was the anniversary of his parents' death and he couldn't believe it. Su Lu sat next to him and after listening to Su Qinglang said that he was sorry for his loss but he needed to come to terms with it someday. Su Qinglang continued to drink alcoholic beverages and Su Lu hoped that he was not going to cook in this state. But Su Qinglang did not agree with him and said that he would cook and Su Lu told him that there was no need to force himself to do it. Su Qinglang went into the kitchen and turned on the gas stove, he got ready to cook food for Su Lu, even if it was very difficult for him. Su Lu sat down at the table and then he received a message from Lin Wansu and she wrote that she would pick him up soon and they would watch a movie. Su Qinglang was preparing food and thinking about why she took his parents but left that brat Su Lu and didn't touch him. And then suddenly Su Lu took out rat poison and started adding it to the food and thought why they were taken away and this scoundrel was sitting there. Su Qinglang wondered if Su Lu really wanted to eat and said that it was excellent and he would cook him his last dinner. Su Qinglang prepared the food and brought Su Lu a bowl of food and wished him bon appetit and Su Lu said thank you for his kindness. Su Lu just wanted to try this food and then suddenly a message came from Lin Wansu and she had already arrived and he could go out. Su Lu said goodbye to Su Qinglang and asked him to write down the payment for the food and said that he would pay for everything at the end of the month and left from there. Su Qinglang was very angry that his plan failed and immediately took the bowl of food and threw it on the floor with all his might and it broke into pieces. After Su Lu and Lin Wanzu arrived at the cinema, he bought popcorn and movie tickets and told her that everything was ready. Su Lu and Lin Wanzu watched the movie and they had a lot of fun and just enjoyed the fact that they were together and nothing bothered them. Two hours later, Su Lu and Lin Wanzu left the cinema and she said that it was a good film and she had not rested like this for a long time. And then suddenly their thoughts converged and they both asked each other how about going to his store right away. Afterwards they came to the store and Su Lu looked at Su Qinglang's cafe and wondered if it had already closed and if everything was fine with him. Su Lu and Lin Wanzu sat down at the table and she chose a book and began to read it because it was a very interesting and exciting book. Zhou Jia looked at her and thought that how could he now look down on Su Lu because everything with him was even worse than expected. Zhou Jia didn't think that Su Li's first date was that awkward because he felt very insecure as a boy. And then Lin Wanzu asked Su Lu if he was still going to close because she was very interested in reading a book. Su Lu said that usually the store was open all night and so she could sit quietly and read books as long as she wanted. But then suddenly Lin Wanzu stood up and said that she would go home because she was already tired and besides, her parents were worried about her. Su Lu asked his wife if she wanted to stay a little longer, but she said that she had to go to work in the morning. Su Lu asked Lin if she could change with someone and she said that it was impossible since it was already late. And then suddenly Su Lu asked if she herself didn't want this and came up to her and kissed her when she didn't expect it. And then suddenly Lin began to cry and Su Lu screamed and asked if she really thought that if she burst into tears, he would let her go. Su Lu said that in the eyes of her damn family, he was just a loser, but today he wanted to show her that it was not like that. Lin Wanzu called Su Lu a bastard and asked to let her go, but he did not want to do this and continued to block her path to the exit. And then suddenly Su Lu seemed to come to his senses and thought what he had been doing all this time because he did not remember what happened now. Su Lu held his head and asked what happened there and he did not control his body and told Lin that he did not want this. 
And then Su Lu shouted at Lin Wanzu and ordered her to get out of there right away and not appear in front of him and go away. Su Lu sat on the floor and thought that he knew for sure that it was not him who did this and he did not know what influenced him so much and he went crazy. Afterwards, Su Lu went to the refrigerator and took a nap for a couple of hours, and at night he got up and went to the bathroom to wash and cheer up. Sula washed his face and thought that he had finally managed to calm down and come to his senses after the shameful events that had recently occurred. And then suddenly Sulu looked in the mirror and said that it was all his fault and that he influenced him in such a bad way. Zhou Jia hit with his hand and broke the mirror and told Sulu that before he felt sorry for him but now he realized that he deserved it. Su Li's whole hand was covered in blood and then suddenly he saw in the mirror that his reflection smiled at him and he was surprised and shocked by this. Zhou Jia ordered Su Lu to get away from this body and then suddenly his hand began to turn black and claws and huge veins appeared there. And then suddenly Su Lu scratched himself with his dangerous hand and he was in great pain from this and even almost lost consciousness. Su Lu was lying on the floor and writhing in pain and thought that he was an idiot and he almost killed himself and did not know why he did this. Zhou Jia finally calmed down and thought that only he was in this body and Su Lu no longer existed in this world and he disappeared. Zhou Jia stood up and looked at the broken mirror and realized that Su Lu was no longer there and it looked like he was inventing all this for himself. And then suddenly Zhou Jia wondered if he really did all this with Lin of his own free will and what was happening to his mind at that moment. Zhou Jia thought that this could not have happened and he screamed and immediately went outside and went to see his old friend the doctor. The man at that time asked his dear wife to go to bed without him and she said that first she would put their daughter to bed in the crib. The man was sitting and relaxing after a long and hard day, but suddenly the doorbell rang and he wondered who it could be. The man looked at the intercom and Su Lu was standing there and he asked him who she was and asked him to introduce himself to him and give her name. Su Lu said that he was looking for Wang Ku and his friend recommended him to him, but the man asked him for forgiveness and asked him to come tomorrow morning. The man said that if he wanted to get an appointment, he had to make an appointment with his secretary, but Su Lu said that his friend was Zhou Jia. Zhou Jia sat with Wang Ku and thought that he had not changed a bit and still worked late in his office and worked brilliantly. Zhou Jia thought that he and Wang Ku were the most successful graduates of their kindergarten and all the children were proud of them. Wang Ku asked Su Lu if he really knew Zhou Jia and he agreed with him and said that they met six months ago. Wang Ku believed him and asked Su Lu how he could help him and what was bothering him and what he wanted to cure since he came to him. Su Lu said that he seemed to suffer from a split personality and Wang Ku asked him to tell him more about this case. Su Lu said that it was as if someone else was living in his body and sometimes he could take control of his body or influence his thoughts. Su Lu told Wang Ku that he knew himself well and he was definitely not capable of doing the detailed things that he did. Wang Ku listened to Su Li's story and asked him how long ago it had started for him and he asked him not to lie if he wanted help. Su Lu said that it started a very long time ago and he couldn't even say when he began to understand that he began to have a split. And then Wang Ku handed him a piece of paper and asked Su Lu if he could draw his second personality so that he could understand this problem. But suddenly Su Lu said that in truth he was the second person because he invaded Su Li's body and Zhou Jia was a guest there. Su Lu said that the one who annoyed him all the time was an original person and Wang Ku was very surprised by such an answer and was shocked. Wang Ku's mood changed and he asked Su Lu if he had already finished off the original personality that was in this body. Su Lu told Wang Ku that he believed that everything was like that and he was 100% sure that he had disappeared and would not bother him again. Wang Ku asked Su Lu if he really wanted him to help him get rid of the influence of the original personality and he agreed with him. Wang Ku didn't know if he should help him, because from his point of view, Su Lu killed someone and if he helps him, he will become an accomplice. Su Lu immediately got up from his seat and asked Wang Ku to help him because he really needed his help and he no longer wanted to endure it. Wang Ku looked at him and said that he needed to think because he doubted that Su Li's words were completely true. And then Su Lu asked Er Dan to help him and Wang Ku froze in surprise when he heard familiar words from this Su Lu. Wang Ku was shocked and asked Su Lu if Zhou Jia had told him about his nickname and how he knew about it. Wang Ku said that he would write him a prescription for medicine and that it would help him stabilize his mood and improve his sleep. Su Lu said that he thought that there was no need for these medications because he thought that the problem was something else or in the psyche. 
Wang Ke said that the most important thing for Su Lu was that he needed to change the situation and think about completely different things. Wang was said that Su Lu needs to get out of the social circle created by the first person and create his own for the second. Wang Ke said that although the existence of the soul was a controversial fact, people believed that souls were the only connection with their soul. Wang Ke said that their bodies, including organs and muscles, were also a container for the soul, and although this soul was different from the concept of people. Wang Ku said that athletes developed muscles through training and how people with developed intuition could perceive this as habits. Wang Ku told Su Lu that he killed the original person but the body belonged to her for so long that she had time to develop these habits. Wang Ku said that this is why he could sometimes do strange things and why he could feel that the original person was alive. Wang was told Su Lu that he needed to get to know this body better and try to get rid of these habits in this body. Wang Ku didn't think that Su Lu had a bad case because he could think straight, which meant that he could get rid of the problem. And then Wang Ku's wife came up to them and asked him if they really had guests and he asked her to pour them tea if it was possible. Su Lu asked how long it would take for the correction and Wang Ku said that for complete treatment he needed about two to three months. Wang Ku said that Su Lu was a perfect example of a split personality where the second personality completely erased the original. It seemed to Wang Ku that it was as if someone's soul had settled in a dead body, as in ancient legends, and then his wife brought them hot tea. The woman asked them to be careful because the tea was hot and Wang Ku thanked his dear for taking such care of her husband. And then suddenly Wang Ku's wife looked at Su Lu and froze in surprise and was shocked and said was it really possible? Wang Ku was surprised by his wife's reaction and asked Su Lu if they really knew each other and when did they manage to recognize each other. The woman told Wang Ku that Su Lu was the husband of Dr. Lin Wanzu and she was eternally grateful to him for his help. Wang Ku couldn't believe his ears and said was it really true and this was the same person he was thinking about all the time. Wang Ku shook Su Li's hand and said that he was eternally grateful to him for saving his daughter and he performed a miracle for them. Su Lu thought maybe he should warn Wang Ku about his daughter and wife, whose hairstyle hasn't changed since her visit to the hairdresser. After the conversation, they escorted Su Lu to the exit and said that they were very pleased to talk with him alone today. Su Lu told them that they didn't have to accompany him further and Wang Ku agreed with him and asked him to be careful on the way home. And then suddenly Su Lu looked at the roof and noticed that Ruiz Hui was standing there and she was just standing there and looking at Su Lu. Su Lu wondered what Dan Er did in his past life that he was awarded such a wonderful family. Su Lu walked away from there and suddenly on the way he saw some homeless man lying on the ground and it looked like he was sleeping there. And then suddenly he grabbed Su Li's leg and told him that he was very hungry and asked if he could be kind and buy him some food. Su Lu suddenly remembered this person and wondered if it was not that old cultivator and his videos were popular back in the day. Afterwards, Su Lu took the old man to a cafe to treat him and asked the chefs how long they had to wait for the order. They brought the order and the old man told Su Lu that he was very kind and Su Lu asked the man how he came to such a life. The old man was surprised and asked Su Lu if he really knew him, because now there are not many people left who recognize him on the street. Su Lu said that he used to like to watch different videos in his free time and he remembered that he was doing well then. The old man advertised paper talismans on the internet that could provide good luck to their relatives in the next world and keep them safe. The old man remembered those times and thought that then he was at the peak of fame and everyone loved him and wanted to sign different contracts with him. But the old man said that he had already exhausted all his luck and asked Su Lu to drink with him for the fact that now he was alive and eating food. The old man said that life was becoming more and more difficult these days and thanked him for helping him today and feeding him. The old man asked Su Lu why he didn't drink with him and Su Lu said that he was allergic to alcohol and could not tolerate it. The old man said that it was not a problem and said that then they could drink tea and then they hit the glasses and drank to the bottom. After dinner, Su Lu walked around the city at night with this old man and they talked about different things in this whole world and the universe. And then the old man asked Su Lu if he really told him that he had a bookstore in the city center and he agreed with the old man. The old man suggested that Su Lu had no profit at all from this business because he knew that it was impossible to make money in this business. Su Lu agreed with the old man and said that there were only losses from this store and he had long been accustomed to it and was not surprised. The old man said that he still believed that working for the dead was very profitable and he made a lot of money from it. 
Su Lu said that he did not want to work for the dead and this did not interest him at all and he liked other usual activities. And then suddenly the old man took out the talismans from his sleeve and thanked Su Lu for the dinner and said that besides them he had nothing else. Su Lu thought that it would be better if this old man told him how he could understand his words correctly because he did not understand anything from his words. The old man said that they were not needed to spend them and they could protect him from bad luck or even bring good luck. Su Lu thought that who in his right mind would carry such things with him because it was very strange and it looked like he had gone crazy. And then suddenly the old man showed Su Lu his scar and asked him to believe him and one such pack once saved his life. Su Lu told the old man that he persuaded him and he would take his talismans, only asked him to cover up this terrible scar. But then Su Lu patted the old man on the shoulder and told him it was time to go about his business and wished him good luck in the future and that he would become rich. But then suddenly the old man's pockets began to burn and Su Lu was surprised and asked him what was happening to him and whether he needed help. The old man said that everything was fine and said that he had to run away from there and said that nature was simply calling him to meet him. The old man quickly ran to the side and hid behind a tree and thought that he had finally managed to escape from there and hide from Su Lu. And then suddenly the old man took the talisman out of his pocket and it began to burn in his hands and the old man told the boss that who would have thought. Who would have thought that the old man would cross paths with one of his boss's men there in the city of Thun and this could not have been expected. And a few days later, Su Lu thought that Su Qinglong's cafe had not yet opened and first he lost his wife and now he too. Su Lu thought that he only thought this way because he was hungry and all he wanted now was Su Qinglong's sour plum soup. And then a courier came into the store and told Su Lu that he had brought him the food he ordered and everything was hot and delivered quickly. Su Lu thanked the courier for the fast delivery and asked that it must have been difficult for him to cope with working during the spring festival. But the courier smiled at him in response and told Su Lu that it was probably also difficult for him to order food during the spring festival. But suddenly the courier froze in place and told Su Lu that he smelled some kind of burning smell and quickly ran outside to follow the smell. And then suddenly the courier shouted and told Su Lu that he was right and there really was a fire there and everything was engulfed by the tribe. Su Lu ran out into the street and noticed that the cinema was on fire and immediately he froze in surprise and was in shock and did not know how this could happen. Su Lu headed towards the cinema and all the people ran from there and told him to move out of the way and said that everything there was on fire. Su Lu asked how the fire could spread so quickly and quickly ran inside the cinema to help people. Su Lu noticed people inside the cinema and they said that there were more people inside who could not escape and remained there. Su Lu heard cries for help and quickly ran into the thick of the fire and noticed that a boy was lying there with a man. The man asked to help him and the boy lay unconscious and Su Lu picked up the boy and told the man that he would come back for him. Su Lu realized that the smoke there was too dense and he also needed to urgently get out of there if he did not want to die there. Su Lu, with the last of his strength, lifted the boy and headed towards the exit, but suddenly the man grabbed his leg and he fell to the ground. The man asked Su Lu to save him first and said that he could pay him for this because he was already dying and could not breathe. But Su Lu did not listen to this man and immediately broke free from his grip and, grabbing the boy, quickly headed towards the exit. The firefighters had already arrived there and wanted to put out the fire, but suddenly Su Lu jumped out in front of them along with the boy and fell to the floor. The firefighters asked Su Lu if he was okay and he said that he was fine, but there was one more person left in the second hall. The fireman asked his people to go with him and they put the boy on a stretcher and wanted immediate help for him. And then suddenly Su Lu noticed that the same courier was sitting next to him and he was also very tired because he was helping everyone get out of there. The courier smiled at Su Lu and showed him a thumbs up for bravely and heroically saving people from certain death. And a couple of minutes later, firefighters pulled out the man from the cinema who begged Su Lu to save him from the fire. The firefighters checked the condition of this man and said that he had no pulse and he went to the next world and they did not have time. Su Lu went into the toilet to wash his face and come to his senses and calm down after these events and thought about this man who did not survive. And then suddenly this man appeared in the mirror and Su Lu wondered if he had turned into an evil ghost to take revenge on him. Su Lu looked at him and realized that at least he had not yet fully formed and this was very interesting for him. A few days later, Su Lu read the news where they said that a couple of days ago there was a fire in the movie theater in Tong City. 
They wrote that people stuck in the fire were saved by a food delivery man and an unknown hero who rushed straight into the burning cinemas. At the moment, it was known about six dead and thirty injured people and the cause of the fire is still unclear. After that, Su Lu closed the computer and went outside to smoke and noticed that Su Qinglang's cafe had not opened for a week. Su Lu was wondering where Su Qinglang could have gone and then suddenly that man from the cinema appeared next to him. Su Lu looked at him and thought that today would be the seventh day after his death and soon he would try to take revenge on him. And then a courier came into the store with a selfie stick and broadcast for his subscribers on the internet and was very active. The courier said that he often goes to this bookstore to relax and read some interesting books. And then the courier looked at Su Lu and asked him how about going to get something to eat and said that he would pay for everything himself. Su Lu told the courier that it was already late and they could have just ordered food because they were too lazy to cook the food themselves. The courier said that he would not advise him to order food online because the kitchens of many cafes were even scary to look at. Su Lu was surprised to learn this fact and the courier said why don't they go to some place together because they almost died together. But suddenly Su Lu smiled and asked the courier if he could first answer one of his questions that interested him. Su Lu said that his air conditioner was running that day and that's why he didn't feel anything, but how did the courier feel it then? The courier became noticeably nervous and told Su Lu that he had a very sensitive nose since childhood and could smell anything from a kilometer away. And then suddenly Su Lu asked the courier if he knew what day it was and the courier waited with interest for his question and did not understand something. And then suddenly Su Lu said that today was the seventh day and the courier was surprised why Su Lu asked such strange questions. And Su Lu said that he understood everything correctly and today exactly seven days have passed since six people died in that fire. The courier asked Su Lu why he was having this conversation and asked if he was drunk and therefore asked strange questions. And then suddenly Su Lu said that it seemed to him that it was the courier who started this fire and he was guilty of the death of ordinary people. The courier asked how he could prove this and Su Lu said that he was not a professional policeman, but he was not blind either. And then suddenly the courier turned around and thought why Su Lu was talking about the police and he felt scared at that moment. Su Lu told the courier if he knew that they were watching him all the time and knew everything he did and it was impossible to hide anything from them. The courier was surprised and asked Su Lu who it could be because he did not see anyone who could expose his deception and scam. Su Lu said that those six who died in the cinema, including the one who was now standing behind him, and they knew the whole truth about the courier. Su Lu asked the courier not to tell him that they were following the wrong person because ghosts never made a mistake in their choice. The courier told Su Lu that he was talking nonsense and said that he had had enough and would leave there so as not to listen to this nonsense anymore. The courier wanted to quickly run away from the store and wanted to open the front door and pulled it with all his might, but he couldn't do it. Su Lu looked at the phone and told the courier that it was already midnight and he began to wait for what action to take because he clearly knew something. The courier continued to pull the door and could not understand why it did not open and what was wrong there and he did not want to let him go. And then suddenly, at exactly midnight, the courier was surrounded by five ghosts and he looked at them and froze in place from shock and could not believe it. And then suddenly the sixth ghost asked Su Lu how he dared to leave him there in the burning cinema and ran towards him. But Su Lu was not taken aback and quickly ran up to the ghost and pierced him with his hand and the ghost began to scream in pain and wanted to get out. Su Lu told the ghost that he understood why he was angry but said that he was angry with the wrong person and was mistaken in holding a grudge against him. Su Lu struck another blow at the sign with his hand and then suddenly the ghost disappeared from there and Su Lu thought that this was strange. Su Lu asked the ghosts to listen to him and said that it was not worth it and he knew that they died because of this vile courier. But Su Lu asked them not to let the courier drag them into an even deeper abyss but they did not listen to him and walked towards the courier. Su Lu thought that he didn't want someone to die in his store because it was bad and he would have problems from it. But suddenly Su Qinglang appeared there and told them that coming out of the fog of rage, they themselves decided to take revenge on them or not the scoundrels. Um, Su Qinglang went to the store and brought a bowl of rice with him and suddenly the food turned dark in his hands and there was something wrong there. Su Lu was very happy to see his friend Su Qinglang and thought that he had returned and finally he could eat normally. Su Qinglang asked Su Lu what was going on there and was it really a party in honor of the spring festival in his store? 
Su Lu told him that now he would tell him everything and explained everything to him from the very beginning and Su Qinglang understood what happened there. And then Su Qinglang bowed to the ghosts and said that today was their last day in the world of the living and why don't they visit their family. Su Qinglang told the ghosts that he was sure that they were all waiting for them at home and said that he would take care of this person personally. And then suddenly all the ghosts listened to Su Qinglang and began to leave this place to visit the families because he was right. Su Lu looked at Su Qinglang's bowl of darkened food and asked why it didn't work on him because it was strange. Su Qinglang told Su Lu that he was different from these ghosts, that's why it didn't work on him and Su Lu understood what was wrong. After talking among themselves, Su Lu and Su Qinglan looked at the unconscious courier and asked what they would do with him. Su Lu offered to take this scoundrel to the police station so that he could be punished for his actions by the law of their city. The next morning, Su Lu returned back and decided to go to Su Qinglang's cafe to talk to him about yesterday's things. Su Lu went into the cafe and Su Qinglang was surprised and asked him if he had already returned and what happened to this evil courier. Su Lu said that he spent the whole night interrogated by the police and the courier should have been thrown somewhere in the forest so that he would die there. Su Qinglang listened to his story and asked Su Lu if he was hungry and would like to eat something before his work shift. Su Lu sat down at the table and told Su Qinglang that he would happily eat sour plum soup and noodles because he missed his food. Su Qinglang told Su Lu that he would quickly prepare everything for him and a couple of minutes later brought Su Lu his order on a tray. Su Lu was very tasty and he asked Su Qinglan why not prepare a whole bucket of sour plum soup at once. Su Qinglang smiled and said that he would do this someday and sat down next to Su Lu because he had a conversation with him now. And then suddenly Su Qinglang told Su Lu that they needed to talk and, lighting a cigarette, said that his parents were gone forever. Su Lu was very surprised and shocked to hear such news and asked why it happened so unexpectedly and what was the matter. Su Qinglang said that he understood everything correctly and his parents were taken away from him forever and he would never see them again. And then Su Lu froze and thought who could have taken Su Qinglang's parents and who could even have come up with such an idea. Su Qinglang said that he couldn't stop thinking why she took his family and left Su Lu and didn't even touch him. And then Su Lu was shocked and thought was it really her and now he understood why Su Qinglang behaved so strangely and drank. Su Lu asked Su Qinglang if he was sure that it was her and he said to heed the order of hell and it's time for the dead to hit the road. Su Qinglang said that she had a long tongue like a road and a throat like a door to an alien world and asked if it reminded him of anything. And then Su Lu froze in fear and surprise and thought that Ruiz Hui was a black and white messenger of hell and he turned out to be completely right. Su Qinglang said that she was like a policeman from hell and people like her wandered around the world of the living to make sure that the law was respected. Su Qinglang said that in the end the living and the dead had different laws and Su Lu listened to him and said that he understood everything. And then Su Lu thought that if everything was as Su Qinglang said, then why did Ruiz Hui have to cause that accident on the road? Su Lu said that as he understood, she took Su Qinglang's parents and that's why he now hated him for what she did. And Su Qinglang agreed with him and said that he understood everything correctly and he was to blame for this because he thought that it was dishonest. And then Su Lu thought about it and asked Su Qinglang if he had put anything in his food and he would be glad if he was wrong in his guesses. Su Qinglang asked him to relax and said that the food was fine and that there was something wrong with it because it was very tasty. Su Lu smiled and said that everything was fine then and Su Qinglang asked him if he knew why she didn't take him away or touch him. Su Lu said that he had no idea and asked Su Qinglang if he knew about it, but he said that if he knew, he would not have asked. Su Lu said that he had no idea and said that maybe she didn't do it only because he saved her life in the hospital. After lunch, Su Lu returned to the store and looked at the table and wondered if this was left over from yesterday's visiting spirits. And then suddenly Su Lu remembered and was surprised because that old man gave him a pack of the same talismans and this coincidence was strange. Su Lu thought maybe this old man had gone through the same thing as him and after touching them he realized that these talismans were different and were made of silk. And then suddenly Su Lu thought about a store for the dead because it was the best way to trade with someone from another world. Su Lu thought that if he understood how to use these talismans, the store for the dead would become much more profitable. Su Lu was strange to realize that the dead came to him more often than ordinary people, and he thought that if he opened a store, he would call it a night bookstore. 
Su Lo went up to the top floor and thought that he needed to rest because he was already completely tired after all the events. Su Lo wanted to open the refrigerator but suddenly froze in place in surprise and was shocked because Ruiz Hui was already lying in his place. And then when he opened the refrigerator door, Ruiz Hui woke up and Su Lu was surprised when she managed to go into the store and lie down there. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if he wasn't cold when he slept there because it was somehow uncomfortable to sleep there. And then Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that he was not a person and she had completely forgotten about it and now everything became clear to her. Ruiz Hui ended the conversation and asked Su Lu to get her out of there because it was uncomfortable for her to sit there and she wanted to get out of there. And then Ruiz Hui ordered to let her go and Su Lu seemed to be under hypnosis and carried out all her commands and put her on the floor. Ruiz Hui thanked Su Lu for his help and he said that there was no need to thank him and he was always happy to help her. Su Lu thought that the child spoke like an old man and it would be funny if she were not a black and white messenger of hell. And then suddenly Rue Rue stopped and told Su Lu that she had a question for him and he did not expect that she could ask him. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui smiled and looked at him and asked Su Lu if he wanted to accidentally work for her. Su Lu was surprised and wondered what she meant and was she really offering him to work for her as a policeman from hell? Su Lu thought that although he saved her life, he did not understand why she treated him so well and did not attack him. And besides, he still didn't understand why she caused this accident and what she needed because there were innocent victims. Su Lu couldn't even think that she would repay him with kindness for saving him, but in fact he hoped that she would leave him alone. Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu why he stood rooted to the spot and why he did not answer her question and stood silently in the corner of the room. Su Lu asked Ruiz Hui if she was saying this seriously and not joking about it because he still did not believe that it was true. But suddenly Rue Rue smiled and told Su Lu that of course he could refuse her offer, but she continued. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that then she would have to take him with her too, like all the other ghosts in this world of the living. Su Lu listened to Ruiz Hui and said that he agreed because he had recently become accustomed to this world again and did not want to leave it. Ruiz Hui approached him and ordered Su Lu to squat down and he quickly carried out her order but did not understand what she wanted. Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if she looked stupid in his eyes and he said that she didn't and she rather looked cute. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui wanted to strike Su Lu and he wanted to defend himself, but suddenly at one moment she stopped. Ruiz Hui looked Su Lu straight in the eye and asked if he was trying to fight off her attack and said that he would have died anyway. But Su Lu was not afraid of her words and said that he had died once and that she really wanted to tell him he did not understand. Ruiz Hui said that that time he was just lucky and he didn't go half of the way he should have and didn't see real hell. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that if he had not gotten out so early, he would have found out how quickly the suicides regretted what they did because life was better than death. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if he knew why she chose him for this job and no one else. Su Lu shook his head and said that he didn't even know why she chose him and she said that he was a smart guy and knew a lot. Ruiz Hui said that the orders of hell had to be heeded and the laws of life observed, because there were a lot of people in the world who were reborn for these reasons. And then Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that he was the calmest of everyone she had met and Su Lu thought that this was not the real reason. Ruiz Hui said that her true motives were not given to him to know and she told Su Lu that she was tired and would now rest. She had to rest while Su Lu didn't make a mess there while he was replacing her at work and she was entitled to it. Ruiz Hui said that once there was one man in the city and he constantly appeared in public and tried to help the dead. But he didn't think that he had no right to interfere in such matters and she asked Su Lu if he was a fool. Su Lu said that if he remembers everything correctly, that old man was also from Rong City and he was wondering what happened to him. Su Lu asked her what happened to him and he was caught and sent to hell but Ruiz Hui asked why he cared. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that he didn't have to worry about those people and he shouldn't have cared and asked him to give his hand. Su Lu didn't know why she needed his hand, and he carefully extended his hand to her and froze, waiting for something. And then suddenly Su Lu felt a burning sensation in his hand and when he looked at his hand he saw that some kind of mark had appeared there. Ruiz Hui said that from now on she gives him the power to command the orders of hell and decide who to send to hell and who to the abyss forever and ever. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that of course he could help someone, but then he would have to bear full responsibility for them. Su Lu listened to her and realized that she had transferred her power to him through this seal and now he did not know what to do next. 
Su Lu asked Ruiz Hui that she was tired and how long she planned to rest and then return to her business. Rui Rui began to go downstairs and told Su Lu that she would rest as long as she saw fit. Su Lu didn't know what to do and wondered if he would have to look for ghosts every night and send them to hell. Ruiz Hui said that he could continue to run the store because it was special to them and all sorts of ghosts would flock to him. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that he was like a candle in the dark for them when they were like moths that flew into the light. And suddenly Ruiz Hui said that with her mark he turned from a candle into a beacon too bright for everyone to notice him. Afterwards, Ruiz Hui went down to the store and chose a book and told Su Lu that she would sit here and read for a while. Ruiz Hui said that the mother of this body was supposed to come and pick her up soon, but before that she wanted to sit quietly. Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if there were any more questions and Su Lu asked her if he would be paid for this new job. Ruijui said that now the economy was in that hole and now it was difficult to earn money working for living people. Su Lu said that she was damn right and Ruiz Hui asked then how about working for the dead. Su Lu said that it was not a bad deal, but he was wondering how much could be bought with these talismans. Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu to give her a couple of talismans so that she could evaluate them because she was interested in learning about it. Su Lu brought these talismans to Rui Rui and she took them from him and said that she did not think that he had already learned about them. Ruiz Hui started counting the talismans and told Su Lu that he was doing well and was a great guy because not everyone could do it. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui stood up and asked Su Lu to go outside and said that he was now learning something new for himself. Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu to give her a lighter and Su Lu didn't understand why she needed a lighter and was she really smoking? And then suddenly Ruiz Hui burned all these talismans and they flew through the air like ashes, Su Lu didn't understand what she was doing. Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that now everything was ready and burned every single one and left nothing and said that now he will see everything. Su Lu smiled and said what could he do now and could he really take them from some hellish bank or something else. Su Lu was talking with Ruiz Hui and suddenly a person appeared next to them with whom he was in no way familiar or connected. And then suddenly a man walked next to them and dropped his wallet right in front of Su Lu and left without noticing it. Su Lu picked up the wallet and was surprised and shocked because when he opened it, he noticed that the wallet was full of money and it was strange. Su Lu became nervous and asked Ruiz Hui what he should have done and whether he should have returned the wallet to the owner. Ruiz Hui said that most likely this person did something bad and he deserved it and also got rid of bad luck in the future. Su Lu asked if this person would not write a statement to the police, but Ruiz Hui said that everything was fine with the money. Su Lu thought that this was great and he could burn a couple of talismans when he needed money and they would fall into his hands. And then suddenly Su Qinglan came into the store and told Su Lu that he had run out of ingredients but had enough to make it. Su Qinglan was carrying a whole bucket of sour plum soup in his hands and suddenly noticing Ruiz Hui there, he dropped it and the jar broke. Su Lu was surprised and asked Su Qinglang if everything was okay and what just happened and he looked scared. Su Qinglang got nervous and told Su Lu that he didn't know that he had guests and said that it was wonderful and he was happy. But suddenly Ruiz Hui told Su Qinglang to get out of there and continued to silently read her book and not be distracted. Su Qinglang was angry and he looked at Su Lu angrily and immediately left the place without even talking to Su Lu about the soup. After Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if he thought that she had gone too far and Su Lu said that it was exactly like that and it was too much. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui asked Su Lu if he knew why she caused this accident and said that she just got bored and stuck her tongue out at the taxi driver. Su Lu froze in surprise and was shocked to learn these details and Ruiz Hui asked him what he thought about her now. Su Lu didn't know how she knew that he was worried about this and she arranged everything so that he would find out that she was to blame for the accident. Su Lu thought no matter what state he was in right now, he couldn't ask her about it or fight her in battle. And then suddenly Ruiz Hui told Su Lu that he was boring, but that's what she liked about him and she was happy. Su Lu asked what she meant, but Ruiz Hui simply lay down on the table and said that she was tired and would now sleep. Su Lu said that he had one more question and asked what he could do about the problems with sleep and eating that were bothering him. She said that Su Lu belonged to hell and hell could decide whether the world of the living rejected him or accepted him, but there was a creature next to him. She said that he would fall under the magnetic field it created, similar to hell, and could sleep normally, but there was no other way. 
Ruiz Hui said that Su Lu could get a good night's sleep while she was next to him and not think about any problems. Ruiz Hui said that as for food, Su Lu could not normally absorb the food of the living and nothing could be done about it. Afterwards, Ruiz Hui fell silent and Su Lu wondered if she had fallen asleep and could a devil like her just fall asleep in this world. And at this time Ruiz Hui continued to just lie on the table and did not move and now looked like a little angel girl.